Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here from the Church at West Shore. It is December the 23rd, 2023. Welcome to our daily devotion and prayer time as we continue through the book of Luke. Today we come to chapter 23, <clears throat> a very pivotal chapter in the book of Luke and in the whole gospel narrative. Um, we start with verse 1, and this is Jesus before Pilate. Then the entire council took Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor. They began <clears throat> to state their case. This man has been leading our people astray by telling them not to pay their taxes to the Roman government and by claiming he is the Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you have said it. Pilate turned to the leading priests and to the crowd and said, I find nothing wrong with this man. Then they became insistent. But he is causing riots by his teaching wherever he goes, all over Judea, from Galilee to Jerusalem. Oh, is he a Galilean? Pilate asked. When they said that he was, Pilate sent him to Herod Antipas, because Galilee was under Herod's jurisdiction, and Herod happened to be in, the, in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was delighted at the opportunity to see Jesus, because he had heard about him and had been hoping for a long time to see him perform a miracle. He asked Jesus question after question, but Jesus refused to answer. Meanwhile, the leading priests and the teachers of religious law stood there shouting their accusations. Then Herod and his soldiers began mocking and ridiculing Jesus. Finally, they put a royal robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate, who had been enemies before, became friends that day. <clears throat> then Pilate called together the leading priests and other religious leaders along with the people, and he announced his verdict. You brought this man to me, accusing him of leading a revolt. I have examined him thoroughly on this point in your presence and find him innocent. Herod came to the same conclusion and sent him back to us. Nothing this man has done calls for the death penalty. So I will have him flogged and then I will release him. Then a mighty roar rose from the crowd and with one voice they shouted, kill him and release Barabbas to us. Barabbas was in prison for taking part in an insurrection in Jerusalem against the government and for murder. Pilate argued with them because he wanted to release Jesus, but he kept shouting, Cru they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time, he demanded, why? What crime has he committed? I have found no reason to sentence him to death, so I will have him flogged and then I will release him. But the tomb shouted loud, the mob shouted louder and louder, demanding that Jesus be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate sentenced Jesus to die as they demanded. As they had requested, he released Barabbas, the man in prison for insurrection and murder. But he turned Jesus over to them to do as they wished. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldier seized him and put him and the, seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming when they will say, Fortunate indeed are the women who are childless, the wombs that have not borne a child and the breasts that have never nursed. <clears throat> People will beg the mountains, Fall on us and plead with the hills, bury us. For if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, both criminals, were led out to be crucified with him. When they came to the place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross. And the criminals were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leader scoffed. He saved others, he said. They said, let him save himself if he's really God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him too by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with these words, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed, so you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. <clears throat> but the other criminal protested, don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man has do done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, 
today you will be with me in paradise. And that takes us through verse 43. I'm going to leave the rest for you to read on your own. We've encouraged this each each day this month, but there is no chapter more fitting for you to take some time today and finish reading on your own. You're going to read the death of Jesus and the burial of Jesus. As you do so, I encourage you to pray that God will speak to you, that the sacrifice that Jesus made will be more alive to you today than ever before. As we continue through this Advent season and we conclude it on Christmas Eve, preparing for Christmas Day, may you come to understand that the reason Jesus came was to die for our sins. Everything that leads up to this, the trial before Pilate and Herod, the, the account of the um, two robbers on the cross on either side of Jesus, it all points to what Jesus did for us. So I encourage you today, take time to read the rest of this chapter. It's not very long. It won't take you but a few minutes. But before you do that, I want you to pray that God will speak to you. I'm going to ask you right now if you will join me in prayer as I pray the same for each of us today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the truth of why Jesus came. And we celebrate the birth of our Savior because of what we have read in Luke chapter 23 today. Father, that Jesus came to walk that path to Golgotha to the place of the skull, that he walked that path so that he would be nailed to a cross to pay the debt for our sin. Father, I pray that as each one of us read the rest of this chapter today, that the combination of the two readings, what we have read this morning and what each of us will read later, Lord, will come together and we will understand like never before what Jesus did for us. And we pray this all in his matchless and mighty name. Amen. Well, I trust you'll have a super Saturday. Once again, tomorrow is Christmas Eve. I look forward to seeing you in worship at 11 a.m. for our uh, candlelight service. We'd love to have you with us. Bring somebody with you. You'll be glad you did. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. And may you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Take care and may God bless you.